How would you define food freedom? Share with us in the comments. When you think of the phrase food freedom, what does that mean to you? It's something that, uh, a phrase that we use so often, but what exactly does it mean? What are you seeking when you seek after food freedom? For those of us who have food and weight issues, and many of us have had them for most of our lives, I know I certainly have, I have certain ideas that come forth when I think about food freedom. In this video, you'll learn about what true fruit, food freedom is, how that comes from God, and how you can have it in your life, no matter what you weigh. I asked the women in our Christian Weight Loss Facebook group, which is a free group that we have, um, how would they define food freedom? What does that mean to them? And these were some of their answers. They had wonderful insights. Um, one woman said in 1 Corinthians 6.12, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. I am free to choose what God has deemed healthy for me. Another said, freedom to choose fruit and healthy food over ice cream and sweets. Another said, no cravings. And another woman said, not being held captive by unwanted food cravings. Another woman said, food cravings means to me that when I get to heaven, I can eat anything I want without guilt. So in other words, that might just be coming in heaven, but not here on earth. Um, one said, not thinking about food unless I'm hungry or not letting food control me or my thoughts. Another said, food freedom is honoring God with my food choices and not being shackled to anything food-wise. Freedom from compulsion. Freedom was when I can finally think about healthy eating and in moderation. I'm free from the food temptations toddler. And she's referring to another video I've done, so check that one out. It's here on YouTube, and it's called um, Ending Emotional Eating with Your Toddler Brain Versus Your Adult Brain. And she goes on to say, I, knew, I know they will always be there, but I can handle them better. Well, I can tell you that when I was 100 pounds heavier, this is what I thought food freedom was. I thought that food freedom would be eating anything I wanted in unlimited amounts without consequences. I wanted to be able to binge on all the chips and chocolate and cookies and fast food and not gain weight and not have the health consequences. Of course, that's completely unrealistic. Um, I've been reflecting on Galatians 5.1 this week. As I'm recording this video, it's the 4th of July, and so our Independence Day here in the United States. And I've been thinking about what freedom means, both um, for our country and even more so what it means in Christ, and especially how it relates to our food and our weight issues. Galatians 5.1 says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And this verse is fascinating to me because it says, do not let yourselves be burdened by a yoke of slavery. And what that tells me is that my freedom in Christ is already there. If I continue to have the burden, it's because I'm allowing that to be true. And they talk about the yoke of slavery. Um, I think about the verse that talks about my burden is easy. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I've always wrestled with that verse a little bit because some of my burdens in this life don't don't feel light at all. They feel very heavy, and my food and weight issues have certainly felt like a heavy, heavy burden. If you had asked me what is the toughest thing I've ever been through in my life, I certainly would have told you for most of my life it was my food issues. I'm, I might still define it as that because it's something that's with us all the time. You can't hang it up and take a vacation from it. You carry it with you everywhere you go. Um, you know the truth I have discovered about food freedom, and that is you actually have food freedom right now. If food freedom is defined as being able to eat whatever you want, whenever you want it, with the, a few exceptions of maybe things you can't afford or you don't have access to all the time, we're incredibly blessed in today's culture that you pretty much have access to any food that you want almost all the time. And now with things like DoorDash and Instant Cart, you can even have it delivered right to your house within, you know, usually within an hour. Sometimes you can drive and go pick it up within a few minutes. I can walk to 7-Eleven and get a plethora of candy bars and chocolate and crackers and chips and cookies, cookies right at my fingertips all the time. Now you might think, um, well, I can't have anything I want because I have food intolerances or I have this or I have that. But you know, you still have the freedom to choose those things. Yes, you will have consequences, but if you're supposed to eat gluten-free or dairy-free or, you know, I'm eating sucrose-free right now and fructose-free, I still can eat those foods. And, you know, truth be told, sometimes I do still indulge in those foods knowing that I'll have consequences. 
but I'm an adult and I'm allowed to make those choices. And that's what's true for you too. You are an adult and so you are actually free to make any choices you want. And that includes too, no matter what your doctors told you, no matter if you're following Weight Watchers or Noom or some other program, no matter if you're keto or not, you still are an adult and you have the freedom. There's no one who's forcing food into your mouth or refusing and taking food away from you. So you do have food freedom right now but you also have the reality of living with those choices. You know, when I think back to when I was 100 pounds heavier and struggling so much with my weight, what I called food freedom was really more like food rebellion. Um, the truth is that healthy eating has healthy boundaries and those can actually become and feel like food freedom the more that you live in them. Think a little bit about financial freedom. Think about someone you might know who has financial freedom. It's true that maybe they have a lot of money, but they also have to have some type of restraint. Because the truth is, no matter how much money you bring in, you can still outspend all your money, right? Like, even if you won the lottery, how many of us have heard stories about people who lose all that money again quickly in a relatively short amount of time? Or, you know, movie stars who make millions and millions of dollars and then spend it all and go bankrupt. So no matter how much money comes in, unless you have some boundaries, some budget, some control, some some self-restraint, you'll quickly spend it all and you won't really have financial freedom. People who have financial freedom have healthy boundaries and the same is true of food. In order to have food freedom, you will need to have some boundaries in place. When I was 100 pounds heavier and truthfully I didn't have food freedom, I had bondage and I had rebellion. Um, there was so much that was weighing me down. I had sickness. I had stomach issues that the doctors couldn't explain. I would go to bed with heartburn because I had binged before I went to sleep. Um, I had health issues that were coming. My feet hurt. My knees ached. My thighs rubbed together when I walked. I couldn't wear the clothes that I wanted to wear. Heck, I couldn't even wear half of what I actually owned and fit in my closet and was in my closet because it didn't fit me anymore. Um, I was embarrassed to go out and meet people because I gained so much weight since the last time that I saw them. I was chained to food. I thought about food constantly. I was constantly negotiating in my mind. When can I go get some fast food? When can I buy more groceries? Do I need to go out and replace those um, drum dum ice cream cones that I just binged on? Drumsticks, drumstick ice cream cones that I just binged on. Should I hurry up and do that before my husband sees? Should I wake the kids early from their nap and run to the grocery store to go get snack foods for tonight? I was constantly negotiating around food. And I felt powerless. I felt like food called to me. It um, drew me to it. I felt like the chips and the chocolate and the peanut butter jar were just somehow drawing me into the kitchen. And I felt almost powerless to control my food cravings. And my life today has healthy boundaries, but the food freedom is so much different. I can buy the clothes I want. I bought this at a thrift store without even trying it on, and I loved it. Um, I don't really worry about, um, you know, am I going to be the largest one when I go to an event, or worry about will the chairs even fit me, or will I break the chair if I sit in it, or will I be able to fit into the restaurant booth? I don't have to worry anymore about, like, if I go to an event and I have to get in and out of the chairs i can uh, you know will i have to go sideways will people have to stand up so that i can even get through and sit down will the arms be too tight and i'll be uncomfortable the whole entire time i really don't worry about will i be healthy enough that i can finish this hike with my family or if i go shopping with friends that my feet will get too sore and my legs will be too tired and i won't be able to walk around the mall and those were all real worries and fears and concerns that i had when i was 100 pounds heavier but my life today also have ba has boundaries around food. Even though I do walk in food freedom and I have made so much progress, the reason that I have that is that I have healthy boundaries. And you know what? Some people might even call them food rules. I have no problem with the word rules. I think it's totally fine to have food rules because we have rules in all kinds of areas of our lives. We have rules about going in and out of buildings and how we drive and what we do and how we live together as a society. But we tend to get really 
um, rebellious when it comes to rules. And so if you are one of those people who says, oh, don't give me any food rules because as soon as you do, I'm going to rebel against it. Um, I would just encourage you to check your heart on that. That might be something to very intentionally pray about and journal about and ask God, you know, why do I have these rebellions and how can I change? Because healthy boundaries around food is a very good thing and it is how you will ultimately find food freedom. So today, I track every day. I use Weight Watchers because that works for me, but I think that whatever system works for you, I actually pre-track, so I plan what I'm going to eat the night before, and then the next day I eat it. Not everyone has to track, but that is what works really well for me. Um, I eat vegetables with almost every meal, and typically I eat them first. I've learned that I need to get full on those foods. I eat a lot of really healthy foods, vegetables, a little bit of fruit, lots of lean protein is what I eat the majority of the time and a lot of my meals that's the only thing I eat I don't really add any processed food to it I weigh myself regularly and I have a set range of about five pounds and when my weight goes above that range for more than a couple days I do something to make adjustments I'm intentional. Um, I look at the menu before I go to a restaurant. I make decisions before I go on vacation of which splurges I want to make and why. I still have cravings, but I've learned how to control them. I think that's important because some of the women who shared earlier said that they want no cravings. And I don't think that's realistic. I think that all human beings have cravings because we have hunger and that's a good thing. You wanna get hungry because food is what helps keep your body alive. And even having cravings, I think, in our modern society with all the delicious food that we have that is there for us to enjoy, but unfortunately, sometimes we overconsume. I think that cravings are going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life, but they've decreased so much because I do not give in to those toddler temper tantrums, my toddler brain that wants to have those cravings. I don't give in to it, and so yes, I have cravings, but they're a little bit more in passing, and they're not something that rules my life anymore. Listen to Psalm 25, verses 9 and 10. It says this, He, meaning God, leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and testimonies. A friend, I do not believe that God wants you to have healthy food boundaries with food because he's trying to somehow punish you or make you feel deprived. I think God wants healthy boundaries for you because of what this verse says. He will lead the humble in what is right and teach the humble his way. If you will humble yourself before God, he wants to teach you what is right. He wants to lead you in his way. It says all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. I believe that's what God wants for you in the area of food. I believe that he wants to give you his steadfast love and faithfulness, that you can feel that and experience that when you live within the boundaries of what is healthy for your body. So one of the affirmations that I use on a regular basis, and that is a declaration of what is true in God's word. And so that's something I write it in my journal on a regular basis. I might read it out loud or even say it out loud to myself. One of the affirmations I use is boundaries bring freedom. Boundaries bring freedom. So type that in the comments. Boundaries bring freedom. And even say it out loud. It's okay. Who is ever watching? Boundaries bring freedom. Rather than thinking that boundaries are something that you need to rebel against and shouldn't have, think about it as healthy boundaries with food will bring you true food freedom. I'm Sarah with The Holy Mess. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.